Look, there's a lot to like in these numbers, I have to say, and I don't know why the pre-market is so indifferent to, obviously, what you've demonstrated in terms of good, strong sales line in most markets. Um, just give us the quarter as you see it and maybe give us a line on Greater China. Yeah, first of all, I think what we're most excited about is that sport is back. And we're really seeing that we came off the Euro where football almost came home. You know, the Copa where Argentina won and now the Olympics. So you're seeing now people are, you know, coming back into the stadiums. Not with, you know, with the rate that we anticipate because of Corona. So first, sport is back, which we're super excited about. Secondly, you know, that we upgraded the guidance to the full year. So we're very confident we'll continue our expansion. And thirdly is we will have a very successful year. What we are seeing, we are seeing, you know, North America, Latin America and Europe having a very, very strong growth, and we are seeing uncertainty in China. Uh, but I'm very, very you know, convinced that China will be you know, very, very successful also for us this year. So we're seeing uncertainty in China, but in three other regions, exceptionally strong growth. So overall, a quarter that we characterized, and we think it was a very good quarter for us. Yeah, um, shame about the football, wasn't it? But uh, <laughs> you're absolutely right. Uh, it didn't quite make it across the line. But anyway, Casper, um, what was interesting, I thought, was the e-commerce revenue line fell 14% here. As we're coming out of the lockdown, do you think that suggests a normalization in sales channel patterns? And what do you do about that? No, I actually uh, expect strong e-commerce growth also in the future. What you saw in the second quarter last year was a partially 70% lockdown in our stores across the world, where you saw an abnormally high uh, growth in e-com. So I would not over read into that. You know, we have a plan to grow our e-com business to eight to nine billion by 2025. So I would more look into the comparison in the second quarter last year was exceptionally high store closures, and that was the only channel. So I think you're just seeing a normalization. Throughout the year, we still expect very strong growth in our e-com channel also following a very strong first quarter. So I wouldn't overread into it. It's more a quarter to quarter comparison. Casper, I just want to pick up on what you said about China. It sounds as though you're not actually particularly concerned about China uh, for the year overall. What gives you the confidence and can you give us a little bit more insight into what drove the 16 percent decline in revenues? So if you look in the last you know, five to ten years, we have had exceptionally strong growth in China. And if you looked, you know, uh, the Chinese government also yesterday communicated out its continued focus on engaging the population in sports. So sport will continue to grow, not only as a participation sport, no, as a viewer sport, as a participation sport. That we're very you know, convinced about. What we did see was because of geo geopolitical tensions, we did see an impact, particularly on our online business in the second quarter in China. And we think that that will over time normalize. And the Chinese market, you know, the GDP is growing 6% a year, six, six and a half. You know, we are very you know, related to the GDP. We grow about 1.5 to 2% normally, our industry and GDP. So, the, you know, the macros are still very, very intact in China. And that's why we continue to be, you know, extremely uh, confident that China will return to growth and will be a very successful market for us also. Um, let's shift to another part of Asia on the supply side of things. A few weeks ago, you had to suspend some of your production in Vietnam due to COVID. What's the latest on the situation in Vietnam and, and how are you dealing more generally with the worsening COVID situation in parts of Asia that are crucial to your supply chain? So, of course, we are concerned about the closure, particularly in Vietnam, and those closures will remain probably down until uh, mid-August, depending on what the government is deciding. We've also offered our own help to vaccinate uh, you know, our workers in China, no, excuse me, in Vietnam. We are across many countries, but it is overall a concern, and not only f for our business, but of course for the population. And uh, we're trying to do whatever we can when it comes to testing. We've sent testing equipment into the country to ensure that we can create a, you know, you know, a healthy environment again. But we expect a normalization throughout the third quarter. That will not have an impact this year simply because of shipping. And I think that we were able to mitigate a lot of the challenges that uh, Vietnam is right now uh, posing on us.